the unify function takes two types, and also an expression in case of an error, but we'll ignore that part for now and just look at the two types. And we'll also consider at first a special case where the first argument is a type variable and the second argument is anything else. And we'll consider all the possible cases in that case. Now if it's a type variable, it may already have been unified to something. It may have already uh, have an equivalence installed that says t must be the same as tau1 for any type tau1. And if unify sees that, it should just try again, trying to make sure that tau1 and tau2 are consistent. On the other hand, if t is not already set, it could be that t2 is exactly t. Um, in that case, uh, if we know that tau2, uh, if, we, if we just get unify of t and t, well, yes, that works. Um, there's no new information there, but there's also no problem, so it can just succeed. Note also, though, that tau, uh, tau doesn't have to be exactly t. It might be that tau2 um, equals t3, uh, as a type variable, and we've already decided that t3 is equal to t. Uh, in this case, also, there's no new information. Um, even though tau2 was not exactly t, it was t3, um, still, uh, if we've, we have decided that t3 is t, then we need to succeed immediately. And, of course, you can add more type variables to continue, continue this chain. So the way around this is to say, uh, let's look at the resolve of t tau2. Is that equal to t? Notice that we don't need to resolve t because we have said if, if t was set to some other type, we would have taken care of that in the first bullet, uh, so it's not. So we can ask the question if resolve of tau2 uh, is simplified to t. If it is, then you just succeed. Otherwise, uh, we do the occurs check. We make sure that tau2 doesn't contain t. It's already not equivalent to t because we got past that second bullet. But if it contains t, then the occurs check should fail. So we're going to have our occurs function there. Um, and of course, we need to do the occurs check on the resolved tau2, not just tau2, because tau2, again, might be a type variable t3 that, uh, if we resolve it, would expose a t inside. Finally, uh, we didn't find any problems, and we do seem to have new information, so we change t so that hereafter it's always the same as tau2. So if t is used again uh, as the first argument to unify, we'll end up hitting this first bullet here. That takes care of all the possibilities for a type variable and some other type. But now we have to consider all the possibilities where the first argument to unify is not a type variable. Uh, if t2 is a type variable, well, we can just swap the order of the arguments and uh, call unify again and let it take care of the type variable in general. So what's left to consider is the case where tau1 and tau2 are not type variables. If they are both num or they are both bool, then that's consistent and unify su should succeed. It doesn't change any type variables, it just is happy that uh, both of those types are consistent. The last case, finally, is that tau1 and tau2 are both arrows, and then they could still be the same, but it depends on the arguments being the same and the results being the same. So what unify does in this case is it just recurs with those two parts. It unifies the argument part of the arrow and the argument part of the second arrow and the same for the result parts. Notice that that argument part might have a type variable on it and maybe tau5 here does not have a type variable in which case uh, that type needs to be installed as the value for type variable uh, that is tau3 and that's exactly what this recursive call will do. Finally, if we get tau1 and tau2 that don't fall in these cases, maybe one of them is num and the other one is bool, or one of them is an arrow type and the other one is not an arrow type, in those cases then unify can just fail and report a problem because it won't be able to find consistent types in that case.